Now that we've talked a lot about phasers and how we might go about AC analysis, let's put all of that knowledge to work in a very simple problem to figure out what the voltage across this inductor in this AC circuit might be. So in a particular problem like this, we're going to have a voltage source, as we always do, and this voltage source is going to, again, be a function of time. And as we've talked about with four previous circuits, this voltage source is going to have an amplitude, it is going to have a frequency, and then it is going to have a phase. So our amplitude here is going to be termed in terms of volts, our frequency right here in terms of radians per second, and our phase delay here in terms of degrees. Now our other components of our resistor and our inductor are in the typical units that we are accustomed to with a 3 ohm resistor and a 0.1 millihenry inductor. To go about AC problems, we're going to have, as we always do, sort of uh, an AC problem solving uh, process. And w what this process is going to encourage is, one, that we're going to take all of our sources and adopt a cosine reference. So what that means is that for all of our sources, uh, regardless of how it's written, we're going to change the, the trigonometric function here into a sine, into a cosine function. So this particular example is written as a sine, and so we'll need to change it to cosine. Um, if it's already in a cosine, then there's nothing we need to do. Step number two, then, is going to be to transform all of our components into their phasor domain uh, equivalent. So transform into phasor equivalents. And then once they're in their phasor equivalents, we can apply all of the circuit analysis techniques that we've used before. Uh, nodal, mesh, supernode, supermesh, phi inspection, all of those existing uh, analysis techniques that we had in DC circuits will now move into the AC domain once we've transformed them into the phasor equivalent. So the third step is going to be to profit and then to solve uh, for whatever you want. So we'll say for the quantity of interest. And then once you've solved, generally it's um, easier to discuss our results in a time domain signal like this one. So even though we will end up with a solution in the phaser or the complex domain, we'll want to convert back into the time domain for the final solution. So step four is going to be convert back into the time domain. And what we'll see on the next couple slides is how we go about each of those steps.